On est bon. Euh, let's go. Alors, vous avez mon écran? Oui, on voit parfaitement votre écran. OK, parfait. OK. Um, bonjour tout le monde. Et um, uh, je, je vais parler un peu uh, sur uh, des pitchs parce que comme uh, je sais uh, par Sofiane que vous avez bien uh, une challenge uh, et il y a des pitchs qui viennent uh, bientôt. C'est que euh, je vais juste euh, vous faire une, une euh, introduction un petit peu, juste qu'est-ce que je fais. C'est que moi, je, je fais, euh, je suis complètement euh, full circle euh, dans l'entrepreneuriat. Euh, je suis fondatrice et euh, managing director Boss Consulting. Et euh, la société se conseille des organisations internationales comme les euh, Nations Unies, l'OCDE, la Commission européenne. Euh, en, euh, pour euh, renforcer les écosystèmes entrepreneuriaux, particulièrement dans les pays émergents. Et euh, je, se réunit euh, des secteurs privés, publics, euh, gouvernements, euh, académies, et aussi avec euh, des, des financiers et des, euh, et des policy makers pour recommander aux policy makers et ministères comment améliorer euh, les écosystèmes entrepreneuriaux dans les différentes régions. Euh, je, je, euh, quand je dis full circle, c'est que comme entrepreneur moi-même est en train de chercher le, le, le financement et de voir une certaine euh, et de comprendre mieux pourquoi c'est été un peu compliqué de voir certains accès de finances euh, et tout, c'est que euh, c'est ça quand j'ai commencé à être intéressé par le côté business angels et euh, je suis devenue un angel investor euh, moi-même et euh, moi, je, je fais partie de pas mal des différents réseaux de Business Angels euh, euh, avec euh, le Nordic Female Business Angel Network euh, à Helsinki, euh, le European Business Angel Network euh, euh, qui est à Bruxelles, le Business Angel euh, des grandes écoles qui est à Paris-France parce que je suis plutôt américaine en France, <laughs> American in Paris. Et, um, aussi, j'ai ai aidé euh, de euh, mettre en place un euh, une, une réseau de Business Angels dans le Moyen-Orient. Euh, euh, C'était le premier euh, réseau de Angels euh, à Bahreïn, euh, ça s'appelle Temu. Et, euh, je, et aussi, euh, je, je gérais des programmes entrepreneuriaux dans les, les grandes écoles, particulièrement euh, des écoles ingénieurs pour réunir l'innovation les, les avec le management. Et euh, je suis une active mentor et coach euh, avec euh, des différents accélérateurs et incubateurs, particulièrement l'Open Accélérateur, le, le, um, le Camp. Mais euh, aussi avec la Commission européenne, euh, je fais partie euh, des jurys pour le European uh, Innovation Council, pour le European Investment Fund, où euh, je fais partie des jurys pour euh, euh, voir des différents projets, euh, ça dépend des thèmes. Euh, récemment, c'était pour la, les solutions de COVID, euh, une autre dans la biotech, euh, health tech, euh, et, euh, et euh, le European Investment Fund, euh, il, avait, il avait choisi euh, euh, certains projets où euh, la European Commission peut investir euh, pour la scalabilité des projets. Mais c'est ça aussi, c'est que la Commission européenne, il ne prend pas la place des capital risques et, euh, et des autres financiers, mais c'est plutôt, euh, euh, c'est un peu dans le, où il y a cette missing middle euh, entre les business angels et les VC, où euh, euh, c'est un peu difficile euh, de faire, go, de implémenter votre go-to-market stratégie et de, euh, euh, et de pénétrer dans les, les autres marchés et de voir une certaine scalabilité parce que pour les VC c'est trop tôt et pour les business angels euh, euh, le montant d'investissement c'est trop élevé alors euh, le European Commission il, il essayait de mettre euh, de financer ces projets euh, qui a du mal euh, de trouver euh, cette tranche d'investissement euh, euh, pour euh, avoir cette euh, scalabilité. Et c'est ça où on dit euh, plutôt pour les European Commission, c'est que est-ce que c'est le projet non-bankable Et quand on dit euh, non-bankable, euh, euh, ça va 
ça veut dire, ce n'est pas négatif dans le sens que vous êtes non bankable, mais c'est plutôt pour dire que euh, si euh, les capitaux risques, je ne veux pas euh, investir parce qu'ils trouvent que c'est euh, trop tôt euh, avec votre traction et pour le montant d'investissement, euh, c'est ça où euh, ça va montrer que tu es non bankable. Mais c'est ça qui montre aussi, c'est que comme vous avez euh, déjà votre produit, produit innovant, vous avez déjà euh, peut-être une patente, un brevet, euh, certaines tractions, euh, mais vous avez besoin pour, ce qui est, pour cette scalabilité d'élargir euh, votre équipe, de, de travailler un peu plus avec la R&D et tout. C'est ça où euh, euh, la Commission européenne peut, peut aider. Alors, euh, euh, moi, parce que pour les entrepreneurs que je trouve, c'est très important aussi, c'est que, euh, euh, et c'est pour ça quand je dis full circle, c'est que euh, il faut bien équilibrer dans la vie entrepreneuriat. Euh, et c'est ça où euh, avant j'étais une danseuse classique professionnelle. Mais euh, il y a trois ans, j'ai commencé l'équitation et l'escrime. Euh, euh, parce que je, je, je voudrais bien me challenger et, euh, et aussi d'entrer de, dans des différentes euh, passions. Et euh, j'ai commencé des compètes, euh, deuxième année, de, de faire ces deux sports. Et euh, je suis arrivée de, de voir quelques médailles, mais malheureusement, avec cette COVID, et euh, en France, ils sont très, très stricts, ou, euh, même ceux qui sont de haut niveau. Et tu aussi, il ne peut pas euh, faire des compètes nationales euh, et il ne peut pas même faire du sport. On n'est pas fait depuis mars. Il est un peu dur. Mais euh, euh, quand même, j'ai eu de, deux euh, médailles de bronze avant. Mais qu'est-ce que les, les deux sports, euh, pourquoi je parle de ça aussi, c'est que euh, l'équitation et l'escrime, ça m'a aidé d'être mieux comme un investisseur. Et c'est pour ça, quelquefois, on dit, c'est il y a où le parallèle? Et, euh, et pour moi, c'était parce que quand je fais des, des compètes de saut euh, au cheval, c'est que euh, comme j'étais en train de progresser et on est en train de monter des, des, des barres, euh, quelquefois je me demande est-ce que je suis capable ou quoi. Et, et euh, quelquefois je m'hésite. Et si j'hésite, euh, le cheval va hésiter. Et s'il hésite, euh, soit il y a un refus ou soit euh, je suis par terre. Et, euh, et les choses, c'est que ça m'aidait. De, de prendre mes instincts et aussi de quand je vais faire quelque chose, je fais jusqu'au jusqu bout et, euh, et, euh, et de, de voir une finalité des choses. Et c'est ça qui, qui m'aidait un peu dans des décisions euh, et aussi dans les investissements. C'est que de temps en temps, je peux voir un projet où je trouve que l'équipe est super bien. Et euh, j'aime bien le, le projet, mais ce n'est pas vraiment dans mon secteur. Alors, est-ce que je vais investir ou non? Uh, c'est un peu um, aussi le projet, c'est un peu vrai early stage. Et uh, j'ai posé beaucoup de questions. Maintenant, euh, je, je suis um, moins dans les hésitations, dans le sens que, comme c'est important, l'équipe, c'est l'équipe qui va exécuter euh, euh, des actions euh, pour développer le business. Euh, euh, si j'aime bien l'équipe et j'ai confiance à eux et en plus euh, euh, je vois que ce projet euh, est innovant euh, mais il n'y avait pas mal de traction euh, je posais moins de questions what if, what if et, euh, et j'investis beaucoup plus euh, 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 plus tôt euh, je ne prends pas trop de temps de, en réflexion et c'est ça qui m'aidait avec l'équitation alors euh, euh, bon, je, je, moi, je vais commencer de parler un peu de... C'est dur quand je ne vois pas des visages, parce que je suis très humaine, moi. <rire> Alors, bon, tout le monde n'est pas... Son... Believe me, Audra, we are all here and we are all here. OK. <rire> parce que ça m'aidait de voir les visages comme ça, ça m'aidait de, de voir qu'est-ce que ça passe. OK, mais c'est bon, OK. Um, alors, je vais commencer avec euh, le, euh, de parler un peu de Elevator Pitch parce que euh, on, on est là pour présenter euh, plus en plus dans les différents événements, même dans les, les Zooms euh, maintenant, euh, des euh, pitch d'une minute. 
Et aussi, il y a des pitches de 5 minutes et 10 minutes. Et, um, et c'est ça où je, je vais parler um, euh, euh, pour la première partie du workshop sur le pitch de, de une minute. Et après, on va parler de votre présentation de, euh, de 10 minutes. Euh, je ne sais pas pour le challenge, euh, il y a combien de minutes la présentation? We are in a five minutes presentation. OK, five minutes. OK, parfait. Parce que récemment, euh, la semaine dernière et cette semaine, euh, je, je suis aussi euh, partie du jury euh, pour le tech tour et, et coach. Et euh, j'étais en train de faire pas mal de coaching euh, ces derniers deux jours avec French uh, Tech Transfer et euh, dans le digital. Et la, la semaine dernière, c'était plutôt dans le digital health et biotech. Euh, et eux, il était en train de pratiquer son pitch de une minute et aussi euh, son pitch de, euh, de cinq minutes. Parce que eux, il va avoir cinq minutes euh, pour son événement. Alors, moi, j'ai fait partie de coach pour aider eux de préparer mieux ses présentations pour euh, euh, le grand événement qu'ils veulent avoir la, la, la semaine prochaine. Mais euh, j'ai noté qu'il était intéressant, c'est que ceux qui viennent des différents pays, euh, et avec ces présentations, j'ai noté des choses qui étaient très en commun avec des entrepreneurs qui toujours se me surpris parce que quand même, il y a pas mal de, des entrepreneurs qui ont des de coaching, des de pitch coaching et des accompagnements dans ces projets. Et, mais quand même, quand il est en train de préparer sa présentation pour les investisseurs, il manque euh, deux ou trois éléments où normalement euh, l'entrepreneur sait c'est important. Mais le mais qui est intéressant, c'est qu'il euh, ne mettra pas en valeur dans son présentation, même il oublie. Et je vais parler de ces éléments après, mais c'est ça qui est intéressant de voir parce que pour, pour vous, c'est ça que je vais, je vais être assez euh, euh, strict avec vous euh, de certaines slides que ce n'est pas la peine de même faire une pitch si vous ne devez pas ces slides. Um, alors, euh, il y a combien qui est um, ici, euh, Soufiane, dans le... Pour l'instant, ils sont 22. OK. Oui. Parce que oui. je oui. pense euh, um, uh, aussi, Soufiane, si um, on peut faire un peu interactive de uh, temps en temps um, avec uh, ce qui est là, um, parce que yes. je pense... Et ça peut être bien parce, et aussi c'est que je pense vers la, la fin de workshop, s'il y a euh, par exemple euh, trois ou quatre personnes qui veulent euh, euh, essayer de faire son pitch de une minute euh, pour pratiquer devant les autres, pour qu'on peut euh, euh, donner un peu de conseils après. Euh, moi, moi, moi je, serais, je serais intéressé de voir le pitch de Amira ou de Yamina, qui sont des mentors, start femmes, <rire> et qui, on pourrait les utiliser comme euh, euh, des cobayes. Ok, ok, parfait. Ça, ça serait intéressant aussi. Ok, c'est bien, parce que normalement, euh, quand je donne des workshops, euh, et ça c'est quand c'est pour... Euh, pour trois, quatre heures, c'est qu'on travaille sur des, des pitches et après, euh, j'ai une elevator pitch scorecard où les autres euh, participants, et, ils marquaient qu'est-ce que c'était bien, qu'est-ce qui manque ou quoi, et ils donnent un peu ses feedbacks et après, la personne qui fait le pitch, euh, il peut euh, euh, voir un peu comment améliorer tout ce qui, qui n'est pas mal. C'est intéressant parce qu'il y a certains qui prennent le rôle d'investisseur aussi. Comme ça, il comprend qu'est-ce que les investisseurs cherchent aussi. OK, pour commencer, euh, alors normalement, qu'est-ce que vous pensez c'est l'objectif d'une elevator pitch pour vous? Pourquoi, pourquoi euh, par exemple, euh, les investisseurs ou dans les événements, ils disent qu'ils euh, voudraient bien que vous donnent un pitch dans 65 ans? Euh, c'est quoi l'objectif? Um, uh, if, if you don't mind, I can. Uh, I would like to answer uh, in order to, to start. Um, I think that the, the aim of the elevator pitch, one of the aims, is to have a business card. I guess. Is to have the business card. Mm -hmm. Carte de visite. Oui. Okay. 
Oui, parce que oui, c'est ça qui est bien, qu'est-ce que vous dites. Uh, um, oh, do you want me to speak in English? <laughs> um, please feel free to, to speak, because uh, since well, when you were to, uh, presenting, there was uh, a poll in, in the WhatsApp group. And people will keep on going in English or in French. So we have uh, an equal uh, uh, two on two. On a un match nul. So on a fait un petit. Uh, un petit uh, uh, on s'est demandé est-ce que vous devriez présenter en anglais ou en français, tout simplement. Donc mm -hmm. là, on n'arrive pas à se partager. Donc uh, feel free to, to, go, to keep on going in French or in English. OK, OK. Um... But you know, as, because as you were talking to me in English, that's why I was um, flipping to English. But yes, um, it, um, basically, it's it's that is that um, you're not just gathering interest, you're not just advertising yourself. That's what's important. Is the objective is uh, to motivate someone to act. So whether it's taking your business card, whether it's um, uh asking saying that hey i'd like to have an appointment with you i'd like to know more or tell me more about it, it it's to motivate your audience to act or motiver uh, um, votre cible uh, um, de faire quelque chose alors ça c'est bien parce que quand vous avez cet objectif parce que quelquefois il est certain qu'avec ses pitch il pense que c'est juste pour uh, uh, to arouse curiosity de donner de curiosité, mais curiosité, ça ne va pas aller plus loin. On peut être intéressé, mais plus que ça. Et c'est pour ça aussi, c'est que quelquefois, je pense qu'il donne une bonne idée si votre présentation ou pitch est, dans, est bien et en bonne route, c'est que si vous avez des investisseurs, c'est « Ah oui, ok, c'est intéressant. »« Oui, ah oui, yes, very interesting. » Mais il n'y a plus que ça. Et quelquefois, c'est intéressant. Euh, ça ne va pas dire qu'il y a plus que ça. Euh, euh, c'est euh, aussi um, pour um, for you. Um, what makes you know that um, an investor is interested in your in your project or your pitch? Qu'est-ce que c'est les signes qui te donnent l'idée? Something like I will call you back. Oui, mais um, euh, avant ça, euh, qu'est-ce qu'il y, qu qu y a, par exemple, quand tu donnes votre pitch et vous pouvez voir un peu euh, euh, côté de réaction un peu des gens, s'il est attentif ou quoi, mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a comme signe euh, aussi? I believe, um, hello again, uh, Aura, thank you so much for uh, giving us this kind workshop. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe, uh, first of all, we will not see the awkward silence, <laughs> silence in the in the room. Mm -hmm. so, um, the judges or um, the people, the investors, they start to ask questions. Uh, I believe questions are the first sign that we we will uh, we will see it directly uh, during the pitch, and also um, they will ask like specific question in the process or maybe um, the way yeah. how we will gain money. And exactly is that um, some entrepreneurs feel that uh, when they're asked so many questions, sometimes they feel they're being, they're being poked. And so they get nervous that, they, that uh, it wasn't clear. But actually, the more questions the, uh, is exactly right, uh, the, the more it shows that uh, investors are interested, they want to know more, uh, they, um, uh, even if they might be a bit difficult in, uh, in their questions, um, it doesn't uh, necessarily mean that they're doubting or um, they're um, not so sure about certain aspects of the, of the project. So um, those are good signs because actually silence, uh, you have to be pretty worried. And also um, sometimes you have judges when you're pitching and, uh, the, and there's silence and, there, and judges are supposed to ask certain questions and it was difficult for some judges to come up with some questions because um, uh, in the end, uh, the presentation wasn't well very clear that you know, perk that um, uh, interest. Um, the, um, the, there are though five elements in your elevator pitch. 
uh, that is um, very important. So once you know that, okay, the purpose of the elevator pitch is to motivate an audience to act, is that, um, uh, is how, what are the elements that you need in order to, you know, um, get this person to uh, take the next step with you? So um, basically in your elevator pitch, you have five W's. Do you know what those five W's are? Mm, not really. Um, so the five W's, which are who, what, where, when, why. So who's behind the idea? What, what's the idea? Where, where is the marketing opportunity? When, what, uh, how long does it take to get there? Your traction and why? And why is why so important? Out of all the W's, why, the, why is so important? To, to know the motivation of the, the of the, the startup or no? Yes, so good. It's basically, why do I care? Why am I excited? Meaning you. And actually what why is meaning is basically your passion. And actually why is the storytelling? So, you know, some say like, oh, well, how do I show, you know, that I'm passionate about uh, my projects, you know, when I'm giving a pitch? But um, the, uh, the, it's actually uh, the, by showing the passion, it's, it's actually the storytelling that's behind it, you know, like why you even started this. For example, um, there was a project that uh, I was coaching in, um, uh, in the camp in the Aix-en-Provence, in the Sud de France. And, um, and it was a project on bees and how to save the bees. And they have a project where they, uh, have urban beehives where even in Paris or uh, Milano, London, you can have you, on your apartment balconies these uh, urban beehives that uh, where they there's just like this chimney where they can come through and uh, and make the honey and you can see through the glass and in actually once the honey is starting to, to make you can just uh, in the morning come take out these different compartments have some honey and put it back. But you can see how the bees are working the honey and all, but uh, they have for their big data to be able to um, see what's going on with these bees and you know why we're having um, uh, less and less uh, bees. And so this was uh, a project they came with, but when I got very interested in the project was, you know, um, I wasn't really intentionally thinking about the uh, bee project or even thinking about investing in, in, in bees. But um, when he was presenting, he was also saying that his great, great grandfather was a beekeeper. His great grandfather was a beekeeper. He's a beekeeper. Um, and, um, and, uh, and was saying that, uh, his uh, friend, partner that uh, did the project with him is, uh, uh, is, is the chief technology officer who helped with the data to, to be able to follow along, you know, like what, what, what is happening with um, the bees. And, uh, and here was very interesting to me was that because of the whole generation of beekeepers and him being involved in it, you could see the passion about how he was seeing that there were less and less bees is becoming very serious uh, with all the pollution and all and what are what is a solution in order to save the bees and so um uh, it was very interesting you know with the, the product they're offering but but of the fact that uh of, of the fact that you know that um he's um even growing up in it and within his family that this is something that really is to his heart so for me as an investor i know that uh it's not that um, with the project that when the, you're gonna have a lot of highs and you're gonna have a lot of lows. And, uh, and this is where it's important that, the, um, that when there's gonna be some lows that the project is so important for you that, that you're gonna continue even during with these obstacles that you, you're, um, you're going to make sure that uh, uh, you're going to endure to get to those next uh, milestones. Uh, because of the because of the passion, so the storytelling, you know, is very important uh, to um, add that. And I will tell you that 
um, I've had uh, entrepreneurs where when they were getting angel investment, they were very, um, uh, their angel investing, uh, they, they, they got their angel investment, um, but then they were moving into scalability for VC and on the, on the, v, on the venture capital, um, they were being advised uh, not that, you know, okay, it's all about the numbers, the bottom line, you know, you need to just show the traction, et cetera. And they told the entrepreneurs to knock out the storytelling is not as important because now you've already proven the traction, the innovation, the product. Now we're moving to the next uh, um, stage. But, um, but even when you're um, looking for funding in the later series, even series A and, and, and above, is that um, you don't want to lose that storytelling because it it it's still the origin and DNA of your project, and uh, and for investors uh, to be able to understand where that value proposition comes from and uh, where the heart of the project is, uh, that comes from the the storytelling. And uh, and when they put it back in the storytelling, they had a lot more um, interest and positive uh, responses coming uh, because. Uh, when they left out that storytelling, it was kind of hard to figure out like, why did they actually put, why did they actually, you know, offer this product? I mean, what, what really did they feel was so, or, you know, important that uh, they felt that this particular market was in need? Um, you know, what made them think uh, of um, uh, coming up with these different uh, um, products? And uh, when you know the storytelling from behind it, the origin, uh, this uh, also helps one know how they can develop, diversify, and move into other markets uh, from that storytelling. So that's uh, very important. You want, you want to sell them on the why. Um, and at the same time, okay, so don't forget, okay, your five W's are the who, who's behind the idea, that's your team what what's the idea so what is basically you know what is the uh, problem the solution and what are the um uh, you know the the benefits and uh where how long it takes to get there that's you know your your traction and uh um when i mean when you know the traction and where uh you know where's the marketing opportunity um is this um, at the same time, you know, when you're giving your one minute uh, pitch, is it about convincing? Is it, is it about convincing your audience? I think, yeah, it's about convincing the audience. And maybe uh, in my case, maybe it's not, uh, it's uh, so, so not correct, but for me, it's to transmit my passion also. Convince mm. them at the same time, make them believe in what I believe also. Okay. Because yes, it's, it's, partly, it's partly about convincing, but not completely. Because um, convincing, it can start to sound desperate. Like why, you know, why do you have to convince me about your project? Because you should be already convinced yourself and, and already, um, uh, you know, you're coming there to show that this is a good project and this is why we need investment. We can do it alone, but we want to, uh, because that's something not to forget ever is that, um, because I've noticed this a lot in, the, in, the, um, in Africa and the Middle East, in the MENA region, is that uh, tend to, when we're very early stage, we tend to um, feel that uh, we can't uh, have so much traction if we don't have, um, uh enough um, um initial investment but don't forget that when you're looking for investment investment is you're looking for is to help you go faster you know that to keep you as first mover advantage to um, accelerate the development of your company meaning that without the investment yes you can develop your business and all but it'll be at a much slower pace than having the investment and being able to get to your milestones much uh, earlier so that you can stay ahead of the competition. This is where investors then become interesting because they, uh, they see that, hey, um, this is a good project. We can see where they have a competitive edge. We can see that where um, that, you know, they have, not, you know, a good workable prototype. 
um, and where their potential customers are. Okay, if we put uh, some of this investment in, uh, they'll be able to um, fine tune that prototype. They will be able to start uh, marketing to the to customers and be able to you know hit different markets. So um, uh, and stay as uh, and have a competitive advantage and keep a first mover advantage. So this is uh, where they want to um, invest to know to have you accelerate. But without it, you could you could still be doing fine. So that's important uh, not to forget. Because uh, a lot from certain regions, they feel that uh, uh, they can't develop their company at all unless they have the investment. And it's the wrong mindset um, when looking for investment. Now, why did I say um, to skip the how? I mean, why, why is there no how? There's five W's in your one minute pitch. Who, what, where, when, why? I believe to go there, it takes more than five minutes uh, to explain uh, how it works, uh, to go to the details. It, it will take a lot of time and um, perhaps the people get confused. Maybe they will get bored. So uh, I believe um, it will not be smart to, to, yes. to go how. So that's exactly is that the how is your five minute presentation um because you're going more on how do you make money you know how does this work uh, it goes more into the explaining so um and it's too long for 60 seconds so for your 60 seconds it's more giving the the you know those main who what where when why elements to um get that attention to make somebody want to take uh action and uh um uh, and then at the same time also is that depending on pitch events and things like, for example, tech tour, they do an elevator pitch of one minute the day before, and then they give a present a longer presentation the day after. But um, in between that time, when they have like a networking event uh, before they give the presentations, those where they heard those elevator pitches, they were very interested because um, uh, with certain projects uh, from that one minute wanting to know more. Um, also, you see when presenting, sometimes it's good also, even when it's just one minute, is like, what can you leave like attendees with where they won't, uh, like they, where they can remember you. And um, for example, and this was just something relatively really simple, but I remember I was at one event uh, as a jury and it, and, um, it was an uh, entrepreneur where they were having the, actually this was before COVID, but the hand gels where, for antibacteria hand gels, but it was with no side effects. So, um, uh, because all the hospitals using these antibacteria disinfected gels, uh, there's like um, side effects that he can even cause cancer. And so uh, they came up with a product uh, that's uh, antibacteria disinfectants uh, without the side effects. And um, but when he came up, he right before he spoke, he said, you see my hands? You see my hands? Well, how many of us are using hand gels all of the time or, you know, and now actually we're using a lot of them. I actually want his product now, but, um, uh, and he was, you know, but, but you see, he was showing in the beginning. Okay. You know, you see my hands, you see how, you know, and like this, something as simple as that, but why I say is because, um, uh, he was in a, a sector that I wasn't coaching or involved and, um, and when there was like a break, I was walking down the hall and I saw him and I was like, ah, oh, you're the hands man, you know? And, and I said, yeah, that was a pretty good pitch. And then I started talking some more and hearing more about his uh, project. And I, and I liked, uh, and I saw actually the real importance of it. And I was actually surprised, you know, how much side effects were in these gels. So you see that, um, that got me to get uh, very interested in his project, you know, like, and remember him just from these hands. So sometimes like if you have something, I mean, one person had something that uh, had in his project in biology and stuff. And he was like showing like this small kind of rock. Uh, but it's like these little things that can kind of, you know, trigger, you know, to remember, uh, to um, uh, kind of uh, give that because you're going to have so many, you know, um, in these type of uh, pitching events, you know, you have, especially if they're giving a one minute 
are not that um, presenting. And uh, you need to set yourself a little apart from the others, you know, to give that kind of unique uh, remembrance. Um, I wanted to also like when we all, when we say, um, just to see if you all um, best understand about when we say motivate someone to act, uh, the objective of the elevator pitch is um, like a movie trailer, okay? You have normally a movie trailer is 100 to 120 uh, seconds. Um, what do you, th you know, um, what do you think is the goal of a movie trailer? You know, bande annonce. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'objectif de la bande annonce dans, au cinéma? C'est un petit, un petit résumé du, du film, un petit, euh, un petit extrait mm -hmm. du, du film, voilà. Mm -hmm. Pour avoir une idée de quoi va ressembler le film et comment il va être. De quoi parle le film? I believe also to get the attraction mm -hmm. uh, audience. Um, they will give you like a small hint about, uh, about the movie. But most of the time would be uh, getting attraction. I will. I would like to remember uh, all the participants. There is no wrong answer. So um, this kind of um, workshop is to uh, to be able to exchange. So um, be free to ask any question if you have. Okay. Yeah, because there's never a wrong answer. <laughs> So, so yeah, you know, the, um, um, it's again, you see, it's not just the arousing um, interest because we could be like, oh yeah, that looks interesting. But the, the real thing is, you know, like even for the movie trailers is to act on it, but it's not. And when we say act on it, okay, the movie trailer, is it just to ensure that the, those who are at the movie in, in that movie, uh, you know, auditorium, do they just want to make sure they get the majority of those people to want to go see that movie? And you see, it's not just those, because actually their goal in the movie trailer is not you in that cinema room. It's actually, they want you to go out and tell people like, for example, oh, Liam Neeson, Taken 2, there's a sequel to uh, his movie. It's coming out in three months. Um, you know, I can't wait to see it. And then, uh, the, and then that friend says, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I really like the first one. Oh, it's coming out in three months. Oh, that's great. Oh, did you know? And, and what they want is that more and more people get uh, interested in wanting to go to the movie theater to see uh, Taken 2. So it's not just touching those that are there in the cinema, but it's uh, the others to get the ma to get to the maximum of people to come to the movies to see that movie. So um, that's uh, uh, to remember again of um, of how you you know there for example the objective is to leave the theater and to talk to someone about it, you know just as much as like with me if uh, I was uh, not planning on investing in particular project, but because of the way the pitch was and uh, the interest that aroused, you know, uh, made me actually realize that, hey, I like this project. And then I was telling someone else about it and then they were looking into it. And that's also how investors, when you have different investor networks where you have some investors that invested in, um, can only invest like, let's say a hundred thousand, you're looking for 500, but they can only a hundred, 150. But then because they really like your project, they're all they're going to go to another angel network and say, hey, we got this project and we raised 200, but they, they need actually 500,000. What would you be interested in investing with us this project? And that's where they like to coordinate with other angel networks. So you see it's it's uh, not just the angels there, but it's also bringing in other angel networks too to um, invest uh, in your project. Um, also for your pitch, remember, um, talk in numbers and not percentages, you know, so for example, in some storytelling, if you want to say that, like, let's say you're, you found uh, some uh, product that targets, uh, let's say children with autism. So you say that, you know, this, like there are, you know, this amount of, uh, of, um, uh, you know, um, of people with autism on the autism spectrum, you know, in this country and uh, um, uh, et cetera. So you see, um, 
uh, because if you if you talk in percentages, if we're not if the investor is not um, as you know um, in that particular sector, uh, you, they won't know really percentage of what what's the what was the market like and all um, by um, by numbers it's it's easier to be able to quantify. Um, also. Um, at the same time, yes, the to avoid um, talking in um, with uh, too many um, adjectives, because sometimes we tend to say, "Oh, it's revolutionary," it's it's you know, it's disruptive. It's um, sometimes that actually minimizes the the innovation of the of the and the of the of the pitch. The um, it's it's for example, imagine you know, well, I mean, most of us aren't flying around <laughs> anymore. Moi, je n'ai pas pris un avion depuis, uh, je ne sais pas quand, de, depuis un an. Alors, um, uh, c'est ça, c'est que normalement, tu sais, quand tu prends un avion, uh, you know, you have the, the flight attendants. And, um, and one time when I was traveling, she was saying, um, be very careful. Fais très attention. Um, parce que c'est um, extrêmement plein, um, tu sais, avec des valises et tout ça, no. you know, it's very, very, uh, it's extremely full in, in the overhead bin, be very careful, and I, was, uh, and I was thinking extremely full, I mean, how could you be extremely full, full is full, how can you be more full than full, um, alors, um, so, and sometimes we tend to, uh, um, want to put an accent on the importance of certain aspects of our product or the technology, and we tend to uh, um, be use too many adjectives. Where actually the the investor could end up being, um, how would you say, deafened by it, immune by it. You know, like uh, um, uh, the 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 feedback you'd want to get will is less than what you would expect. To, to be careful not to use too much um, uh, adjectives. And, um, uh, and to remember too that, um, you know, in your pitch, uh, when I say the five W's and uh, uh, to really keep it, um, you know, very, um, you know, one to two sentence per element uh, to have it flow, uh, because again, Today, when I was coaching and I was hearing some of the elevator pitch runs, and theirs was even like 30 seconds, but uh, sometimes they tend to spend too much time um, talking about uh, the description of their company and the um, and explaining, you know, the problem or the solution. Spending so much time on it, and especially some can end up talking a lot about the solution. Be, uh, because they're so passionate about it, but but um, uh, you need to have you know good precise um, uh, sentences, and this is where I want to show you um, uh, on the elevator pitch this uh, template here. Now this template is very like you know if you're in the in the, the school. You know, uh, le, le CP, vous êtes dans l'école, uh, à CP, à six ans. Uh, quelquefois, ils donnent des, des devoirs, uh, comment on va remplir des choses qui manquent et tout. Alors, um, uh, uh, hello. Hmm? Go ahead, Aura. Uh, just. Um... Oh, I thought someone was talking to me. But by them continuing and even continuing in the same network, and circles by seeing the that's the traction and the milestones being achieved actually investors end up ha, um, seeing that the company's less risky than they thought from before they see the development and and uh, they like the team before and so then with the timing it's like hey we want to we think this is a good project we want to invest so um so never feel that uh, you know there's just like a one shot or two shot the only thing is is that if you are looking for investment, okay, and you ask and you pitch to a particular investor, but, and he says no, but then uh, an entrepreneur tries to go to another investor that's in the same fund. That's usually a no-no because investors share with other investors. And, uh, and usually if that one investor in that fund 
had said no, it's usually because they've already talked to other investors within the fund if they would be interested in investing too or not. So um, that's usually kind of a no-no um, where then um, your chance of, a, in, of getting invested is becomes a, a complete zero. Um, because again, that's where investors feel they can't trust that, you know, if they said that, uh, no, you know, we feel that your project is not, uh, um, you know, of interest to our, you know, particular fund or for whatever reasons, um, it doesn't mean that, uh, that it was only this one that was blocking you. Um, it, uh, so that's where it's important that, you know, in, in that aspect, but, um, uh, the, that's why, like, you know, again, when we say, you know, always having your one minute pitch prepared, uh, that's why it's important too, because you don't know where you will be at what time. And uh, the thing is, I, uh, you know, when they always say, okay, what's an elevator pitch? Okay, so if you're in a, you know, elevate that, you know, when they say, well, you could be in an elevator, you see Bill Gates and, and, then, and uh, you got like 30 seconds to say something to him to get his attention, because maybe you're in his department, maybe you want to propose. Uh, um, a product line, whatever, uh, that's your moment. And how, how do you get that attention? How do you get him again to motivate, to act, meaning like to get the card or want to have a meeting with you? But you see, um, this is where it becomes, um, um, and this, you know, can be in a restaurant. It can be, you know, on a Zoom event. Uh, um, you always have to be prepared. You never know uh, where these things happen. And I've had, uh, um, these kind, this kind of uh, uh, things happen, you know, have had have happened to me in unexpected places. But because I was prepared and uh, and seeing specific people that I knew would be of interest, you know, um, uh, it really uh, can make uh, um, you can really make a lot of things happen uh, in situations you wouldn't think you'd be in. Um, Aura, uh, that leads us to another question. Um, since we are uh, now celebrating the Algeria Climate Change uh, Challenge and most of the projects are uh, tech, so uh, there are uh, some research with us, some, uh, some people are in uh, tech fields. So um, when we are doing our uh, pitch uh, for five minutes or one minute, uh, how we will make our language too, e too easy or um, very uh, friendly to the uh, investors because yes. investors have different backgrounds. So but can you give some yeah. more small advice in this matter? Thank you. Um, well, this is that, that's where I was saying that's where it's a very important to have, you know, like a very simple, that's why I was showing you that elevator pitch formula to keep it very simple. You always have to remember that when you're pitching, especially those in biotech, medtech, you know, these high tech companies, deep tech, is that um, you have to, uh, um, basically your pitch, if you're pitching to your grandmother, ta grand-mère, ou, uh, ou ton enfant à trois ans, or your, your kid of three years, what, um, if they can understand, you got a great pitch. If they can't understand what you're doing and they don't know, uh, uh, um, and they're confused, uh, then obviously your, your pitch is too technical and scientific. So um, it's very important because usually if I practice something, I practice it on my son. And when he understands and, and you know, says, oh yeah, that's a really cool solution for that product. Uh, that's, that, you know, that's really interesting. You know, like, uh, is it already on the market? Uh, that's where he knows the, you know, those main uh, simple elements. So, um, uh, Especially again, you see, um, when talking about the the technology, you don't want to use a lot of those, um, you know, really complicated words and all. Um, uh, you want to make it very simple so that even those people who aren't in the sector. And why I say that is that I remember um, I was sitting listening to pitches, and this one presentation was in the cybersecurity, and. Um, and I, you know, I don't um, invest in cybersecurity. And um, what was interesting was that as he was pitching, you know, I, I you know, the, giving the problem, here's the solution, here's the technology that we have, this is what's innovative, that's our, the value proposition, this is how, this is our secret sauce. 
and I saw the strategic partners and, and I was like, gosh, this could be like another Google. And, uh, and the thing was, because I was able to understand very simply, you know, I didn't know all the technical behind, you know, the cybersecurity, I could just see that he had great strategic partners, good team with an advisory board uh, that was very exemplary. Uh, uh, I could see where, you know, they had the solution to the, the problem and where they had a first mover advantage. They gave a good competitive matrix on, you know, where the competition was. And, um, and because uh, I could see really like how they would make money, what the business model, that they, they had a good strong business model behind. Uh, I was uh, uh, interested to invest when I never thought I would invest in cybersecurity. <laughs> and the thing, what was interesting was after he pitched, he had been telling, asking the coaches, um, oh, do you think, um, actually I should just target those who are interested in cybersecurity and you know, it, though, um, those type of investors um, rather than general investors. And that's when we all said, oh, well, if you're going to do that, you just lost half of the investors because we got our interest in your project and we're not, uh, uh, this sector is not our main uh, sector focus. And, uh, but they um, grabbed the right attention and, you know, and by showing really where that secret sauce was and all, uh, we knew that this could be a, a unicorn. And uh, so uh, most important is uh, that uh, no matter what sector the, um, uh, the uh, investor is in, uh, it's important that it's, uh, well presented because also on the on the technology when um somebody wants more who's an expert in it and wants more description stuff that's where in question and answer in further discussion that you can go further you'll have that all but most important is to be as clear and simple as uh, uh as can be um here is um so in your, you know, five minute presentations, when I was saying like, you know, there's the who, what, where, when, and, you know, why and, uh, and the how is that basically most important your five minute is you want to give, okay, your, your, the problem, you know, the context, you know, what, what's the problem or the pain and the, and, and to not forget that um, when we're talking about pain. Okay, investors are not looking for aspirin. We don't want temporary, you know, we don't want a temporary solution. We want morphine, you know, we want you to kill it. So uh, kill the pain. So we want something that we know is definitely um, uh, sustainable um, and it's not just uh, temporary. And, um, and so in your um, presentation, you know, it's, it's very much almost like a story and that's why also the sequence of the elements that you present, because, for example, I've had um, some entrepreneurs where because they hear that, you know, team is important, that we invest in the team and its priority. They start with the talking about the team uh, in the beginning of the presentation and uh, by discussing about the team in the beginning of the presentation. Um, it's not very ideal because first we don't really know, okay, what is the, what is your problem solution? We don't know what your product and service. We don't really know your business model. What is your value proposition? You know, what, what, what is the market that, that you're targeting? We don't have, know all these aspects. So we don't really know if your team is, is that great yet. So um, it's too early. Actually, when you, when you um, put in your slide of team after you talk about the problem, the solution, here's the, techno the, the technology, and this is where our value proposition is. Uh, this is the business model and how we're making money. We, this is um, uh, uh, where our marketing opportunity is. You know, this is our target market. This is where our market share is. Um, our competitive landscape. Uh, this is how we're positioned on a macro and then this is how we're, um, uh, here's a competitive grid to show us how we differentiate from our two or three direct competitors. After that's when we wanna know that, okay, so they really do have a solution to this problem. They got a really good innovative product or service. Um, they, uh, we can see how they can make money. Uh, they got a good business, viable business model. Um, we see that how they're targeting, you know, that this is who the market they're targeting. They could have a pretty good big market share. So we can see a real need here. Um, 
okay, well, who's behind this? Like, do who's the guy behind the technology? Like, who is able? Uh, this is a pretty big market. So, what type of marketing sales directors and marketing do we have on that team? You know, this is pretty scientific. So, do they have a scientific council? Uh, how are they? You know, how can they show um, credibility in in what they're doing? And uh, and so, um, this is where the team then becomes very effective. And then, just as I'm talking about team right now. Um, you know, many of you, especially in these pitch events and stuff, will be like, I have a very complimentary and diverse team. And we're very, you know, like, and we fill the weaknesses, you know, uh, my strengths fill their weaknesses and my, their, we, you know, like weaknesses, their strengths, you know, I fill their weaknesses and stuff. But we hear that a, a, a lot. You know, it's, it's like, you know, when you hear like, oh, we're disrupting the market. Oh, we're revolutionary. You know, uh, oh, we're going to be the next Google or Uber. You know, the, the, these are the things we hear all the time. So it becomes dead in our ear, you know, like kind of like, okay, here's another project saying they're going to be the next Airbnb, but you know, uh, that it's like Airbnb, but it's like this, or we're the link, we're the modern, you know, like the new LinkedIn of best not to benchmark because at the same time, maybe you will be the benchmark, meaning, you know, maybe you will be the Google of the next, uh, but, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you need to set yourself more unique from apart. But um, uh, it's important, uh, uh, I say for, you know, when you're talking about your team, which uh, a lot of um, I, I think your your mic went uh, went off. Yeah. Okay. Is it good now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay. Um, where was I last? Uh, ah, I see Sofian. <laughs> I see a face, another face. Feeling okay. better? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, okay. I feel like I'm in Algeria <laughs> now. <laughs> I feel like I traveled somewhere. Um, Okay. Um, yeah, I was talking about the team. Okay. I don't know what was the last thing I said. Um, there was just a few seconds. Complimentary, like seconds. complimentary competence team. Like they're okay. trying to have uh, diverse uh, skills, but uh, they are missing the whole point. Is that we always hear this in presentations. Actually, what, can, what is very effective and what uh, um, investors are starting to like, because this is what I've been... Um, preparing my entrepreneurs, you know, many entrepreneurs, is that I tell them in their, in their team, show the milestones and traction of what each team member did. So for example, if you got someone, in, especially it's important for the young, you know, people who are like a young team, because that's where some investors think like, do they have enough uh, experience? You know, how are they really gonna take this uh, company to the next, you know, uh, level? How are they going to develop it? You know, I don't know if this one's as technical savvy as, but by showing the traction, this is where it's interesting. Where, for example, somebody in the sales, maybe their experience, their professional experience that you know they've um, uh, uh, had, you know, very good uh, sales uh, records uh, um, and all, uh, is to show. Um, you know, like uh, the potential of, you know, where this company can go by each team member. So for example, like if uh, somebody had an app and they were showing that the, the marketing um, director um, and the, for example, the, um, you know, the um, community manager, okay, that's also part of the team, uh, shows that when they, the first, when they just started the company, they had this many users and that with, you know, like Hugo uh, in, in just, uh, let's say six months, he ended up with uh, three times as much of the users. You see, this is interesting traction for investors because they say, oh, you know, they just started and he already has that many, this company already has that many users because of Hugo. Uh, so that you, you can see like where actually, um, where their skills and potential is in um, scaling up the company. So that's what's uh, interest, um, interesting on the, on the team side. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, we're actually, um, yes, vulnerability and authenticity of the team will uh, always be um, like a milestone for, for them 
to, to be shown to the to the judges or to the investors. So how do you think, um, is it important to have an experience before or like um, teams, they have, they are young, they are, they want to launch their, their own startup. They need experience or maybe well, they- that's where, that's where like, for example, it's always good to have experience, but at the same time, you know, like for Americans, it's, you know, actually what you do on the ground, you know, it's not like, okay, I got an MBA, but what have they actually done with their MBA? You know, it actually depends on the country who you're pitching to. But the thing is, for example, you show your experience, but at the same time, um, type of traction that you've had, like what you're doing, you know, on the ground uh, um, uh, presently, that's what's uh, um, inter interesting too, is, you know, the, um, what you're achieving, you know, presently within the company, what you've been able to do from, let's say, six months ago to now. That's why I was saying traction is interesting to see for each uh, team member. But also, like, if you don't have that, that's why also for a young team, it's important to have an advisory board. And that's where it's important that you show on your team um, uh, a slide that uh, um, you have like someone within the um, your sector that uh, comes from a big uh, corporate, maybe, you know, somebody else that if, like if it's uh, um, in research and development that if someone working in the lab, some scientist uh, um, has uh, uh, really likes your project and wants to support it on the advisory board. Um, this uh, also depending if it's more scientific or not having a scientific council, but by having an advisory board, you know, with a young team that really helps um, the, um, in the pitch. Um, because for example, we had uh, once uh, this one, he came because we invest mostly in team because when there's just one entrepreneur usually as business angels say, look, you need to come back. You know, you, you can't develop this company on your own. You need to get the right people. And, um, and the thing is that um, the reason we invited to hear his pitch anyway, was because we saw that, okay, he's alone, but on the advisory board, he had the director of Facebook of France. He had the, he had uh, the director of marketing for Google. He, he had like these um, uh, very well-known uh, um, advisory board members for, uh, in these companies uh, that were part of the, of his board. And so we were interested to hear about his company because of them supporting uh, this, uh, this team. And, um, and then when we saw that, okay, he has a good project and, and okay, he, he doesn't have other team members, but he has a good advisory board. That was when it wasn't um, dismissed right away. We, we said that you're gonna need a good chief technology officer you know, to get this platform in place um, if you can find one, you know, in three to four months, we'd be happy for you to come back to pitch so that you can pitch to the other um, investors. And, uh, and I remember also this entrepreneur, he said, oh, how, um, uh, you know, but I don't have, but that's part of investment. I need some investment to, you know, uh, grow my team. How am, uh, how am I going to get someone to come in? You know, not everybody's interested in just sweat equity. And, um, and we said that, if you can't find another team member that's, you know, that's interested in your project and willing to, you know, that to believe in it and willing to want to help you to get it to the next stage, then you'd have to question about your company that there's obviously something missing in your company that makes people want to get involved. And uh, when he was kind of not so sure if he was going to find a, a chief technology officer, you know, um, without like a good salary. He actually found, you know, an American who really liked his concept and the project and uh, and decided that, yeah, he can get do for some sweat equity and uh, and he wants to be considered as a co-founder and take part. And so he found them and uh, they came and um, presented. So um, uh, that's where, again, you can always find team members because that's something I want to tell you, too, is that if you're showing in your pitch you're looking for investment and part of those funds are to build your team um be very careful because investors don't invest in intangible assets because you can walk away and uh that's why investors don't invest a lot in consulting firms 
and um, you know, and things uh, unless they have like a tangible assets. So um, uh, they want it, investors want to invest more, and in, you know, like the prototype, the R and D, the um, you know, the knowing like your clientele, you know, your customer base. The um, they they want to um, in, invest in you know tangible um, um, assets. So uh, because uh, that's their principal investment, you know, when you're starting to go scalable and going into the Series A, um, they'll uh, use uh, be happy that you use some of those funds to build the team, but uh, most of it uh, has to be in um, tangible assets. So as I was saying, as you're giving your presentation, okay, at five minutes, okay, giving you the problem, the solution, and you know, what is the, uh, uh, what is the technology? What is your um, product or service, you know, and its benefits and then showing um, where the value proposition, you know, and the business model. Uh, when I was telling you earlier in the very beginning of the workshop, um, certain elements missing, those two elements that are missing to this day, and I'm talking about being in the Nordics, America, Middle East, Africa, was that, Four out of five were missing the competitive landscape, no competitive competition slides. And, uh, and also some for, um, forgot to mention the team. So you're thinking, okay, you know, even coaches will be like team, 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 team's important, you know, um, and, uh, but yet they weren't on and the ask. And so, you know, in my workshops, I always say, I, you know, to leave it with competition landscape, team, and the ask. And don't forget that because I'm telling you, half of you are going to go out, you're going to prepare your presentation, and half of you are still going to, you're going to be like, yeah, Audra, we know, competition, yeah, team, okay, no problem, yeah, good. And you're going to go, and half of you are going to go on the presentation and all of a sudden be like, oh, but in my five minutes, I didn't have time to talk about the team. Or like, well, the competitive, the competitive, uh, you know, competition matrix, it was a little bit about showing the potential, my value, it was in my value proposition, that's where it was showing how I differentiated. Um, no, it's, it's important because actually a lot of entrepreneurs, the reason they kind of, it's not that they want to minimize the competition, but sometimes it's actually because not a lot of work had been on actually analyzing the competitive landscape enough. And sometimes there's those that think like, okay, I don't have direct competitors, uh, you know, but you do have indirect. And it's important that you know, um, these indirect competitors could become your future direct competitors. And we want to know. And that's why it's very important that you show in your competitive um, uh, slide, I actually like two slides. One is the competitive positioning where you show more on the macro level, you know, the, um, the, the attributes um, of, of, of how you're positioned in the market with all the other players. And, um, and then another one on the competitive grid, which is your, um, which is your more micro, meaning you give two or three of your direct or indirect competitors, and then give the attributes, uh, price, different technology specificities, you know, um, and other aspects uh, that really show where your secret sauce is, because what usually happens in a lot of these pitches is that what investors aren't able to grasp, and then sometimes they get confused is that when you in the introductory are, are giving your presentation on what is the problem, what is the solution, it's not very clear. And, um, and so then they wonder, okay, well, where is that USB? Where is that unique selling point? Where is the secret sauce? I don't see how you differentiate. So what happens is investors lose, you have to remember investors, it's like they have ADD, attention deficit disorder. They hear so many pitches and this and that, that if, if in the first 30 seconds, they're not going to clue in, you, 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 um, you're going to miss them for the rest of the presentation. And, um, and especially if they're not able to understand really like where, you know, your solution is and why your technology or, you know, product or service is so innovative um, because they're, um, it's confusing to them from the beginning. It's not very clear. It's hard for them to follow along with the rest of the pitch. That's where then the, the pitch uh, is not as uh, effective. 
So that's um, very important uh, to, um, to, to remember. Um, Thank you so time, much, Audra. Uh, actually, uh, this helped us a lot. Um, I will just sum up the points that you, you've talked about so mm -hmm. you, we can continue. So uh, pay attention to the timing, uh, your body language, uh, storytelling, uh, work on your, uh, your why. So uh, being vulnerable uh, during your presentation, being authentic, and also uh, make sure to focus on... At the very end, what's always very nice that I tell my entrepreneurs is that you know, um, if you put a slide um, uh, that shows like, you know, 10 reasons to invest, for example, and you give like 10 different reasons why you should invest in your company, it's always a nice slide to have at the end because it kind of um, summarizes and reminds, you know, of like why this company is so um, innovative and not. Um, I wanted to just give you one example of a company um, before closing um, the workshop, one example, of a company that um, it was students that I coached in uh, at Polytechnique in, um, is it fine that I'm speaking English? Do you want me to switch to French at the end? <laughs> it's okay for me. I don't know for the it others. It's fine for me, for, uh, for any uh, of the participants, if they have any trouble with the language, please uh, put in common in the chat, please. Thank you. English is okay, go ahead, no problem. Yeah, English, okay. Sure. Okay, so I had two um, entrepreneurs who were um, in the um, uh, in one of uh, my uh, entrepreneurship programs, and um, and they had a project where you know they, they had they had you know in their smartphone where you can attach um, a device where you can print pictures right away. So it's kind of like a Polaroid, but you can use your own phone. And you can um, print pictures. And then they've said that later they can also print business cards and things right away and share the the photos and all. Well, um, they actually had um, pitched and presented to um, the three super business angels in uh, France: uh, Simoncini, Xavier Neal, and um, what's this? Z uh, Xavier Neal, Mark Simoncini, and um, oh, what's his name? but these three super business angels, they, um, and they came to me and said, hey, you know, they want to invest in our company. Uh, uh, they, they, they're willing to put uh, 200,000 euro. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, that's great. And, um, and I said, uh, well, for how much equity? And they go 30%. And I said, 30%, you know, at this point in time with your company? I said, um, wow, that's kind of a lot. And they said, why? They said, this, these are the three super business angels. Um, um, oh yeah, Jean Grajean. So Grandjean, Simoncini, and uh, Xavier Neal. And, uh, and they said, but you know, these super business angels have a big network and uh, they'll be able to help us uh, to, um, uh, to develop our business. Uh, I think it's uh, worth it, no? And I told them, look, I'm your coach professor. Um, you know, it's you who's piloting the project. It's you who makes the decision, but I will give you a red flag that it's very early on. You don't have, um, you know, a second version of your prototype. Uh, we don't know what's your customer base. You don't have a clients yet. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, usually would be better because of with your type of product, if you went onto a crowdfunding platform, you would be able to see geographically who's interested in your product, you know, what's the potential of customers and, and clients. Um, so um, you could even already give like a forecasting of, you know, of, of potential clients. So I said that um, I just feel it's a little bit uh, early to have that much uh, traction. You know, you would be able to get your patent and, 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 and so you can justify your valuation. I said, the re because you don't have enough traction, you can't justify your valuation. And that's why they're taking more equity because they're showing that you haven't reached these specific milestones. So, you know, we're gonna take this much equity to help you get there. So I said, but, you know, it's up to you. 
And I was surprised because they came back to me and, you know, these are 20, 21 year olds, you know, like I think if I was there at that time being young and, and these super business angels saying, hey, we'll put 200,000 euros in and, and I'm doing an academic program, you know, in a school, I think I would have been tempted, very tempted to. And they came back and they said, look, we decided that um, you're right that we don't have enough traction and we're probably giving too much equity. So we're going to go to uh, an accelerator and uh, fin a, a hardware accelerator, finish the uh, next prototype and go on to the crowdfunding. So I said, oh really, okay. And I was surprised because you know it was very tempting that proposal, these angels are very well known. And, um, uh, but I knew that also these angels you know, they kind of like, they they spread angel dust, meaning they invest in like 50 to 100, you know, companies, like a little bit here and there. And so it's not like they're going to be mentoring these, you know, all these startup companies. So, um, uh, and so they went to this hardware accelerator and then they went and on Kickstarter to see who would actually be interested in their project, you know, the the um, what geographical location, what type of customers. And here that that was all they were interested in it wasn't actually to raise the money. And they ended up uh, um, uh, and, and they ended up being a, a success story in France. Uh, they ended up raising 1.5 million in a week and a half. And they didn't even plan on that a week and a half 1.5 million. And they came to me and said, hey, Audra, we didn't give up any equity and we have 1.5 million and look at all of these potential clients and and uh, and look, actually, it's America and the UK that's more interested. And here we were targeting France. So they they changed uh, their target market and then decided also because they had Berkeley that was um, helping them with their um, project uh, on the school side, decided to go to California and develop and, and start, uh, you know, um, putting it to market. And now they're like on series C, series D, but, uh, um, but this is uh, just to show you a little bit as an example of, um, you know, how important traction is. And, you know, and also um, when um, that also investors, if they're asking for more equity, it's usually because um, you're not able to justify your valuation. You don't have enough traction. So you want to have as much traction as you possibly can before going to investors. Because um, uh, as I said, it's, it's uh, investors are there to help accelerate and develop your company. And that's uh, important. Um, uh, just a question, Audra, please. Uh, at any stage, uh, can you define what stage they, they've been uh, in ideation or MVP? The startup that you are talking about. Yes, because they were they were um, preparing their uh, prototype, you know, like a second version of their prototype. So they were really in the very early early stage, not you know, right before the MVP. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and um, and also just to let you know too is why I had been mentioning business model many times and why it's important in your in your pitch you know, how you're making money in, in that business model, because it's basically the DNA and the heart of your project is because, you know, business plans, you know, for example, are all great. And when you present a, a business plan, it's, but it's more like a roadmap, you know, um, things can change. You're going to have to modify it, but it helps you with vision, you know, where you want to go. And it's always good to check in because sometimes we might detour from it. It's always good to go back to the business plan and see like, okay, I detoured from it. Is it for a good reason or not a good reason? Is it because I got distracted or is it because really actually uh, we have a, mar a, a market that's more interested in our project uh, than the target market we initially thought? But um, on the business model is that the business model uh, as it's the heart of your project is that um, that's what can, you know, if you don't have like a, a good viable uh, um, business model, that's what can set you apart from getting investment or not. And why is because a lot, for example, when there was Uber, you know, and private chauffeur and all of these others, they were all coming at the same time for investment. And everybody thought they were the only ones that were introducing La VTC and that uh, they were the original, you know, company. But because uh, there was a trend and, you know, market needs, uh, people were picking up that, you know, um, 
in the market with the taxis, et cetera, that there was a place for these VTCs. But the thing is, us investors, when we saw the cab, chauffeur privé, you know, we saw these other um, Uber, saw these other companies, uh, was that actually because of the business model, it was that one of this is one of the company's business model was showing that they had actually two two to three revenue streams it was showing it was going to be making much more money in in two years and the amount of market share they would have and with their vision of how they're going to go scalable uh and how they're making money was that they were would be making a lot more money and and with their vision than the other company that's doing the same thing but but yet their business model was different so it really and so sometimes that's why when uh, they don't like to sign disclosure agreements investors is because a lot of the time um, it's not uh, the, there's projects that are very similar but it's the business models that are different so it's not like someone took someone's idea or you know um, extracted it depended on the business model so that's why it's very important you know because there's trends in sectors and you know there was a time when there was like conciergerie the concierge deluxe uh, and um, different companies were presenting but it was showing um, on one business model that the way they were pricing and the, and their type of, um, uh, and their revenue streams and cost structure was, uh, uh, gave much more, um, scalability than, a, a, another project. And, um, at the same time to leave you with also is that don't make the mistake of doing things, um, uh, serially. Because as you're raising money, it's like right now you're going to pitching events, this and that. And, and so you're preparing for raising funds. But then all of a sudden, there's no sales. You know, like, you know, we don't see the next version of the prototype because you're just thinking funding, funding, funding. And then everything else goes. You have to really work in parallel. It's a parallel process. And uh, as you're funding, you still need to be making the sales. You still need to be doing your marketing. You need to still get out there. Um, uh, it needs to be um, in parallel because in a funding, um, in a funding um, timeline, uh, six months to get your investment. So the thing is, is that by the time, you know, through due diligence and actually making it from the beginning to the actual investment, um, you can't have your company go on hold because what can happen is, is that during due diligence, you could have some investors that will freeze and not want to, um, you know, invest in and, and decide not to invest in your project. So then when you move on to other investors who may be interested, they're going to wonder like, why are you not making any sales? Or like, why does it look like there's a slowdown or how come nothing's didn't been developed for four months? So then you don't have enough, you know, proof to show like why the company is not de developing properly. So make sure that when um, when funding, promoting, et cetera, that it's done in, in a parallel process. And also, again, just, you know, as I know that there's a lot of young team members, you know, here is that, um, you know, why do we say to um, that it's good to have three on a team? Is it because, you know, that's, it's like when people give workshops and stuff, they say, oh, you know, this is a model you should use, or like, you should make sure that you have three on a team, or you should have this in your like elevator pitch, because this is what makes a good pitch. You know, is it just, you know, like what the community has decided that this is like good models to, to forward, or is there a real reason why three? Is there one person that would be able to answer like why they think that, um, why do they think that like uh, investors, uh, um, you know, even coaches say that it's good to have at least three on a team? Um, I think that it's a little bit about the communication because I think it's scientific, scientifically proven that when you're three, you can communicate easier uh, than when you're okay. four or more because at some point you'll need a moderator. Okay. Well, I, I always hear this you know, that it's it's because you always have like, uh, that if there's two that may be disagreeing, there's one that, you know, can, you know, um, help. And, and that's true, you know, which is good, but it's actually not the, the main reason. I would say it's like one of the reasons, but not the main. The main reason is because you need one to make it, one to sell it, and one to collect it. And make it meaning, you know, who, you know, who's the innovator, who's the one that makes the product, 
who's the one that sells it and then collect it, meaning, you know, managing and finance. And when you have those three main skills, you can pretty much for two, three years, you know, um, develop the business, um, having those three main roles. So that's why usually um, they say it's good to have at least three because it's these three main skills that are most important in developing a business. So um, that's where you also before looking for investment, you want to make sure you have your three, you know, um, three, because those are the three main skills. And that's what kind of makes or breaks. And that's why, again, if you just happen to have two, who's on your advisory board? You know, do you have someone on the advisory board who's, for example, maybe you don't have someone in, in um, like, a, like a mar marketing di director um, and he's kind of like CEO marketing, but not exactly a marketing director. And um, you can um, uh, on the advisory board have someone who's, you know, head director in your sector in a company that supports and is able to uh, give some of their um, savoir faire uh, until you find, you know, someone uh, to join um, completely uh, your team. Um, and then also to remember that, you know, with patents, don't think that patents um, is defensibility, you know, maybe for drugs, yes, but it's not patents that's going to give you that defensibility. You have to know that you, that there, there's other aspects like in your business that uh, are just as important. It's not just patents that's going to give you that uh, competitive uh, advantage. And at the same time, you know, um, with all these big companies, you know, like L'Oreal and cosmetics and stuff, and, you know, just by adding one little ingredient, they could have a different product. Um, is that uh, do you really want to litigate against the giants? By the time you go through the whole process, you, you see you could have already been moving on to, to you know, to fine tuning or uh, developing your, your products uh, um, and uh, modifying. And at the same time also with partners, don't feel that, you know, as you're growing your business, oh, I, um, if I don't have, you know, this one from Google or this one from, you know, um, from Cisco that, you know, my company will not be able to develop and, and scale up like it should. Um, uh, don't put too much obsession and make it a focal point to partners because, you know, what's so big about taking, you know, um, uh, you know, like taking one partner to fill in the weakness of another. Um, what's important is that strategically, if you're able to, um, again, it's like, Put yourself more in a competitive advantage and and uh, um, and uh, enhance your business. That's great, but uh, not to feel that uh, uh, um, that uh, it's so that you know you're looking for a partner uh, because you can't the the company can't develop without. Um, so uh, most important is that you concentrate on your sales and and meeting your numbers and 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 moving forward. And then again, when you're looking for investment, don't forget that, you know, in outside the, when you're getting outside money, it's um, even with 51% ownership, you, it does, it still does not mean you're in control. You know, it's an illusion. You, you are still giving, you know, a part of your company. So, um, you know, uh, they are going to be on the strategic boards. They are going to be also having a voice. So um, always remember that, that when um, receiving outside money, even if you have 51% ownership, um, you're, not, uh, you're not entirely um, in control. And at the same time too, when pitching, uh, if you're pitching uh, instead of prototyping, you wanna remember that if, um, you have to have the complete package. So you have to at least have a workable prototype when you're pitching. And it's the same like in crowdfunding is that, um, if you're doing crowdfunding campaign, those who are backing you, they're going to want to see that product coming out. So you want to know that when you start that campaign, you want to know that in six months, you'll be able to put it on the market. So that's how you know also when is the right timing to start a crowdfunding. Because if you're just in idea stage, you want to kind of feel out the market, but you don't really have like a workable prototype, you know, and knowing that once they back you, you can then uh, be ready to get it out there on the market, uh, you're going to have a lot of unhappy backers and that could work against you um, in communication because backers are pretty quick. And that's why also anybody who's doing crowdfunding platforms or, you know, online 
raising money, you have to constantly let the investors know what's going on, even if it's bad. Like even if your factory burned and you know, like, uh, and you have to start all over again, investors will appreciate or your backers will appreciate that you've been honest with them because it's happened. I've had entrepreneurs, their factory burnt. And, uh, and so it, it backed up them with the whole manufacturing process. And, but they let them know, and they said that we're going to have a delay of three to six months and, and stuff, but then they understood and were happy. Whereas um, some after their campaigning, they're not constantly letting their backers know how they're developing and moving along. And sometimes like if it's not going well, they're afraid they don't feel they have any good information to pat to communicate. But the thing is, the backers will be um, solid, will have solidarity with you and will move with you if they're in the know. So it's important to know that yeah, once you start campaigning, you, you, you're going to be, you have to be very involved and making sure that you keep it um, uh, communicated. Okay. And um, I think like- uh, so much uh, Actually, um, a lot of uh, great and valuable information that you've been giving us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want, because we want deeper to the uh, process because we really want to get uh, like um, the experience from you. So thank you so much, Audra. Uh, but I want to uh, have small uh, small uh, advices about uh, the skills. Uh, when you are seeing some um, project in front of you, like uh, how you will define the soft skills, what are the main soft skills that you want to see in uh, during the pitch? Um. Well, that's exactly that, you know, when you're um, talking about uh, the team, you see, that's where it's interesting to, to hear more about the backgrounds of, uh, you know, of each of the members. Uh, on, um, like I was saying, you know, with the, the project being, you know, with the, the entrepreneur being a beekeeper and, you know, and his family in the beekeeping and him, how he really wants to save the bees, you know, there's that personal aspect. That's why the storytelling, you know, gives you that uh, personal aspect um uh that uh that actually um enhances you know like the whole origin and the dna of you know that's behind the the company okay thank you so much audra i believe we can uh, we can have the session for the pitch that you, you've been asking for uh yamina yamina Bouchir, she's with us and uh, she will be presenting uh, her project. Oh Tell yeah, me. and because you know this is on the climate change challenge, that was exactly. something I just wanted to bring up is that you know, um, particularly when pitching, you're gonna basically you're actually gonna be um, um, how do you say Att you know attracting more imp impact investors. And when we say impact investors, you know, like um, entrepreneurs at the same time, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah, I want to focus on impact investors because I'm making a, a social impact, you know, um, on the economy, the environment, education or what. Um, but now, but, um, and uh, it's not just about, and we know that impact investors isn't just about, you know, making money. It's also about making impact. But now you're getting that that was like a couple of years ago when impact investing was just beginning to be known, you know, of, of um, those who were um, interested on the uh, impact side, not just on the investment side. But um, but now actually impact investors are becoming much more um, picky on how you um, when you pitch about the metrics. So what's important is that. Um, if you have a, an impact investing type project, um, you need to also show that, for example, if you say that, you know, you're building coding schools in, in, in you know, in, let's say in Central Africa, um, and, um, and you're going to be an impact on helping, you know, more people have access to these coding schools. Uh, okay, so what's the impact, you know, the social impact on education, so you want to show the metrics that um, 
okay, you know, in, in like um, some, you know, either a percentage of our revenue or what is going to be going into helping, for example, you know, um, the underprivileged be able to have more access to education. And so, you know, we, we want to improve that by a certain percentage. So you need to show the metrics like every, um, you know, like a year of how you're achieving that. Impact investors becomes important to them. They want to actually see the metrics on, you know, on the impact you're making too. So don't just um, vaguely throw it out there that, oh, you know, we're also, you know, not just making money, we're also making a social impact, you know, on, you know, environment, education, this or that, um, because they will poke at you and say, okay, well, what is the metrics behind that? Like, how are you making, how much impact are you making? Um, uh, that's something to keep, to remind you. Thank you so much, Audra, again. Uh, I believe uh, we can have the simulation, simulation pro, uh, pitch with uh, Yamina. She's with us. Okay. So she can present uh, her project and we can, uh, you can give us small tips about, about it. Okay. So the stage is all yours, Yamina. Uh, just to ask, uh, do uh, can I pitch a five-minute pitch or uh, uh, with the presentation, PowerPoint, all this stuff? I mean, can I wait? Um, Amira, ask you to... just a one-minute pitch. You know, like um, here. Let me show you the um, you know that's similar to this formula. You know, okay. basically stating what your company is and what you're developing, what products and services for what you know, marketing customers and that you resolve, you, you solve the, the pain with, you know, your unique technology or product. Uh, just, uh, I can, uh, not any presentation, just talking, you mean? Yeah, just for one minute, like the pitch, like uh, that you have here, this elevator pitch formula. Okay, no, don't, I, I don't need the present presentation, PowerPoint presentation, just to talk. Okay, so um, we are Tenmu and we are a startup that biofabricates a leather in the laboratory. So we are using what we think is the most advanced technology, which is bacteria, to make our leather. And we feed this bacteria with agro, with waste, agro food waste in, uh, in the, uh, from the houses and the, from uh, agro industry. Uh, from the agriculture and agro alimentary industry. So, and um, they're trying to make kind of purse and um, diabetes shoes uh, to, to, to get into a, a niche market. And we hope that we are we're going to make a brand uh, you, uh, with the help of the women designers and maybe women cooperatives. So uh, that's it. Okay. Well, the... Yes, the, the beginning, uh, um, you know, was very good how you were mentioning about your company and, you know, and what it does uh, and, uh, and what, uh, you know, your, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the product you're offering. Um, but it would be good, you know, then afterwards to not explain too much on the, you know, the de like, again, um, ed um, not, I don't need any more detail about the company. I'm interested to know actually that, you know, for example, that once you told me about the, your company, what industry it's in and the products and services that you are, you know, providing for the, you know, this market was that you told me that, you know, that we have a team of, I don't know how many team members you have. How, how many members are on your team? Uh, your microphone, yeah, Mina. Um, sorry, we are three members, uh, me, uh, uh, chemist student, and, uh, and um, human resources. Uh, okay, because, uh, you know, if, if yeah. you mentioned that, you know, we're, we're a team of three, you know, that uh, um, have, I don't know, so-and-so many years of experience in this with, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, a, uh, with uh, two or three members on the advisory board, and, um, you know, um, and then also, like, you know, unlike, you know, if you state one or two competitors, you know, that you have, you know, what it is that sets you apart from these, you know, two competitors, you know, very quickly too, you know, it's just like, um, mm -hmm. Sorry, can I ask you a question, please? Um, is it possible to pitch with a video without, without a talk, just put a video of one minute and that's it? Oh yeah, that's what I want to say too, is that, 
now with this whole Zoom and things, some people feel that they even had like one where it was like a artificial kind of robot, you know, I mean, it looked like the person, but yeah. you know, he was like mm -hmm. 3D. And uh, especially now when we're even offline, because we invest in people, you know, the thing is uh, by being also offline, by hearing a video, you know, of the, of a one minute pitch and not the actual person and, or just seeing this 3D figure, um, uh, there's not this connection and you can't feel through the person's voice and how they're talking, like how, you know, really passionate about the project. I mean, you can feel a lot of things through body language, through the voice. And so um, that becomes even more and more important during uh, the uh, when uh, when when uh, it's um, online uh, because we don't have that human touch. Because again, investors, you know, um, it, it's all about trust, and you know, even between investors. So um, uh, the more they have on that, you know, on that human aspect and being able to feel the body language, the voice, the passion, and all. Um, uh, it's important more life. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because also you could end up having anybody do some, because also the way you present the pitch lets us know actually how much um, you're really like uh, where you're, you may not know it, but we can feel like where we can feel your expertise on it, your knowledge on it. It's all through the voice and, and communicating. And, you know, sometimes that's why if they spend too much time on the problem and the solution, you know, in the introductory, it's because they're wanting to almost, you know, they're trying to convince and over convince, um, um, you know, and uh, which also tells us that, you know, like, um, obviously, there's something they're not confident about, you know, like certain aspects of their company, you know, when feeling that they have to convince and over explain, you know, why this is so important and why we have the solution. So um, it really plays a big part. So don't ever lose the human aspect of. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have time for one more if there's. Does anyone want to pitch? Since we have Audra with us, is there someone who wants to pitch? No, I think I can go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So our um, our idea is Kufa. Uh, so we know all we see plastic. Uh, no, just uh, sorry to, to interrupt before you begin, but feel free to go in French or in English. It's in French or in English. Okay. Donc, uh, on, vous êtes libre de choisir. Okay. Yes. Donc, uh, our idea is uh, so we know all and we see all the plastic bags everywhere and uh, they are uh, a big uh, pollution problem in all, their, uh, in all the world. Uh, so we, we think about a solution which is uh, a bag made of uh, fabric and it is uh, foldable so they can bring it with them everywhere. And, um, and so uh, we want uh, to sell it to men and women. So our clients is the men and women who have families and make uh, uh, the, the one who are uh, responsible for grocery. So, and, um, so that's it. And we are a team of three, me, well, I will be the manager and uh, my two friends, one who is um, who is um, uh, marketing, who did study marketing, and the other one did study um, finance, so she will be responsible for this, uh, this kind of things. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, you know, the um, when you were mentioning about the plastic bags, mm -hmm. It would be interesting, you know, as part of your storytelling and the elevator pitch is, you know, if you can quantify and say that, you know, like the, you know, where you are and because where you're targeting whatever city or part of the country that you're, um, that you're first targeting your, you know, with your company is that by quantifying and saying that, 
you know, um, the amount of waste, if you can get it quantified, you know, the amount of plastic, oh, not the statistic, the statistic, even by starting with a question that kind of says, do you know how much waste, you know, is being made? And, uh, you know, worldwide, there's this much, you know, waste uh, happening. And in our, and, and in particular, in our, you know, local area, there's, you know, um, this, uh, amount of um, this is why we, you know, have come up with a solution, you know, you know, etc. Et yes. mm -hmm. uh, that can help be good to kind of um, bring in, you know, the, um, the interest uh, and the, you know, on the quantitative side, um, and then, you know, to show how you're attacking that uh, problem, you know, with your, uh, with your product. Yeah, thank you. And, and again, you know, don't forget your, um, your uh, ask, you know, how much you're looking for. I think also because, you know, you're still um, like working on the, the project. When you talk a little bit like we want to, or we would like, it's better like in a pitch to, you know, as if it's a matter of fact. You know, um, afterwards, when you're in your presentation, we're going to be showing the milestones and stuff. They can see what you've achieved and what you will achieve. But um, uh, it's best to keep it in the present. You know, we're a company. It's in this particular industry, developing these products or services for this market uh, and type of customers. This is the we solve this uh, pain, you know, using our unique technology. This is our team composed of duck, 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 duck. You know, unlike competitors, we have this, you know, um, this mm -hmm. is a secret sauce. And, uh, and uh, in order to, you know, reach certain milestones, we are going to be needing, you know, this amount of investment for, um, uh, for creating our business. Can, you know, do X, Y, and Z, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions since uh, I think that we will take the last um, uh, question? Yeah, I have a question, of, please. Uh, yes, Yamina. Uh, just a question. Are uh, women and men uh, as an entrepreneur different in their mindsets, uh, uh, kind of well, thinking? Is well, there a difference between them? Yeah, I mean, I had I had made a panel where um, the topic was uh, why does it pay off to invest in women-led companies, and uh, the thing is, um, the mindset, yes, is a little bit different in the sense of is the way you pitch. You know, when um, uh, when men pitch, you know, they present and show you know the figures, they show the ambition, you know, in where they want to go to three to five years. And, uh, and even though it may be, you know, over ambitious, it does make you, it does make the investors dream or feel like, hey, this could be the next unicorn. Women um, are more like risk adverse in the sense that they're afraid to say where they feel they may go because they feel they'll be held liable later. And uh, the thing is, it's, these are still assumptions, you know, and all. But actually women, like when they're giving their financial figures, they tend to, they'll give like what will happen in three years. And actually they will say like in 576,033 cents, and actually they will be 576,000 know, euro in three years. Um, but the thing is um, uh, by, you know, not showing enough ambition in the project and by staying modest and, and, and feeling that they don't want to feel accountable later if it doesn't, I mean, that's part of entrepreneurship, you know, like uh, you can have these great uh, pro forma statements and uh, provisions and, uh, and things can change in the market and, you know, and it, you may not be where you said you were going to be in three years, you know, that's part of also investors, you know, are, are just working with, you know, the information and the, and, you know, the, the, um, and on the, on the resources they have, but, um, and so usually like investors, actually, they decrease 30%, you know, for male, you know, uh, forecasts and increase 30% by women. But when you say like, does it like for like, actually even male investors, you know, investing in women is that in their portfolio, they like to diverse their portfolios because they want to go for that one unicorn that they feel like, hey, this one can really make it. And then 
because they know women have more sustainable businesses, you know, it's not going to make you dream, you know, you will, but you know, it's a company that will grow and uh, invest, but it may not be the big uh, unicorn. Um, they want to diversify their portfolio. So they know that usually what a, what a female had, pit, had pitches and where she says she's going to go, usually she will. So even if it doesn't make one dream or they're not going to make like 20 times more, they know that, okay, we can still make five times more. And we know we will make five times more, but it's mind that mindset. And that's why I say like to those that, I mean, still a man is a man and a woman's a man. And that's why, I mean, God made man <laughs> and woman and yeah. you don't want to change that. But, uh, and that's why it, at the same time, uh, when they say like, you know, well, how should women be more, you know, like um, dominant or whatever? No, I mean, it's more like they just need more, you know, sometimes women uh, in, on, in entrepreneurship, more mentors, you know, to help, uh, you know, to, um, to take more risk and to, you know, and to, and to be, feel that, you know, you know, they can take more um, risks uh, to, um, you know, achieve specific objectives that uh, um, when we say mindset also is that like a man can look at, you know, like in an interview and say, okay, you know, this is what they want for this position and they could be missing five other things and, and they'll still take the job because they'll say, okay, I pretty much have the majority. Okay, you know, we'll see when I get there, you know, the other, but um, I'm pretty much qualified for this. Or one, they, they'll see that they're missing those five and they will focus on those five missing and say, oh no, I can't take that job because I don't have these five. So actually it's more in the mind of the woman that, you know, actually uh, misses out on the, these upper, you know, these opportunities, actually it, it's themselves, like their own, their own worst enemy. You know, because um, one last thing to say was that I had a female um, entrepreneur. She was uh, pitching to our investment group. I was the only woman, you know, like there was like 10 other men and um, and it was a really good pitch, but um, her presentation wasn't taken. And then I met her a year later and, uh, you know, she stopped uh, her company and I said, why? And she says, well, I, I didn't get the investment, but they were all gray haired men uh, in the investment board. And I said, yeah, I was there. I wasn't great, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a, you know, a man. Um, and she said, yeah, but, you know, um, obviously I'm a woman entrepreneur. And I said, no, I said, the reason why um, they didn't invest was because they wanted to have um, an investor to a company to coach the, the, the project, to prepare them for the present, you know, for when they're presenting to all investors and they couldn't find someone in big data. And, uh, and nobody else felt comfortable. They felt like you could be the next Google, but they, they felt that they didn't, uh, they couldn't find an expert that knew about the, to take the project, to see in due diligence if everything would be right. And they were looking everywhere in the investment group for, you know, someone to take the project uh, with the expertise in big data. And that was the only reason, you know, they didn't, but you see, um, and she actually was giving like good figures in her, uh, in her presentation, but you see um, instantly, you know, thinking that that was why she wasn't uh, invested in, it was for completely, you know, the wrong reasons. And you see, actually, she um, should have asked, you know, more like, okay, what are, what is it that, why my project wasn't taken, you know? Okay, but, uh, so women tend, it's, uh, tend it's more to feel place. insecure. Yeah. Uh, they, they tend more to feel insecure about. Yeah. Uh, the opposite men are more secure and more uh, confident than, than women. Well, see, again, that's why, like, um, when I was saying, you know, uh, you know, men, if you go way back, to almost prehistoric, you know, men were the hunters exactly. you know, gathering food and the women were at home and they were actually, you know, making sure there was enough, you know, ration for the food. They were actually yeah. being the ones organizing at, from the home. So you see, that's why like very good on those aspects, but you see also like if, if the man didn't come with the food, there'd be no food. So, I mean, they went out and did what they had to do, yeah. you know? So, yes, okay. thank and you. Actually, this will lead us to um, the importance of the feedbacks. As you said, Audra, um, after we finish the session with investors or business angels, it's really important to get feedbacks from them to know why we are accepted or why not. We are accepted to not get any um, mistakes. Maybe my project uh, isn't great, or maybe, as you said, they don't have the, um, the expert that they need to invest in you. Maybe they don't have the knowledge. 
And we thank Yamina also for uh, bringing the topic about uh, female population in the entrepreneurial world. And that's also, um, it's really important to talk the, uh, to um, fight the unconscious bias because we have a lot of thoughts about um, female, uh, men, uh, who will be successful, but the most important part is the result. So um, beyond the sex part, the sex uh, topic, uh, we can say results are the most important part. So thank you again. Uh, I invite all the participants, if they have any extra uh, question to um, send it in the chat. If not, we call Sofian or Karim. I think now you can. I think now you can hear me, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So uh, thanks, uh, Amira. Thanks, Odra. Uh, and nice to meet you because we didn't have the time to to speak together, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't even introduce myself. So because <laughs> I'm uh, like a casual style, you know. This is Friday in Algeria, and even I'm uh, still in the, in the office. So I'm Karim. I'm the founder uh, of Branco of the incubator. Ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I am the one. <laughs> okay, thank you. I am the one behind this story. Um, uh, I'm really happy to have you with us, and uh, I heard all the the things starting from 2 p.m. So it's now four and a half p.m. So it was two. Uh, and a half long hours, but very interesting. And uh, um, uh, I think uh, all the participants uh, uh, had the, 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 the chance to hear you and to share with you and, and to see Yamina. I don't know why she's uh, laughing. <laughs> Maybe my French uh, English accent. Huh? This is it, uh, Yamina? <laughs> so it's not you, it's not. Ah, it's a uh, kid, okay. <laughs> so it's part called... of your charm, Karim, it's part of your charm. Don't lose it. Yeah. Don't lose this French uh, accent. Okay. Sometimes it's kind of cute when you have to. <laughs> and, but I'm and, pretty impressed that uh, everybody um, is really good in English, you know, too. Uh, Arab, French, English. So that's pretty good. Three languages. Uh, but but you didn't hear the youth. They are better than us in English, and it's very strange for us because you know we are the the old school, the old guard. We are the Lossian guard. So we learned French first, because huh? at the TV was seeing the cartoon in French. We grew up with the, you now you are living in France, so you know Club Dorothée, surely. So, so we grew up with Club Dorothée, so we learned French like this. And even our parents are, all, are older than the youth parents, so they born in the, uh, all the French colonization. So it's why we are, more French than English, but the youth is very interesting there, English. And I have to uh, also to give you this information because I heard, I heard um, uh, Sofian at the beginning, he didn't told you that the youth are from all parts of Algeria. We are from the south, we are from the north, the east, the west. And you know that Algeria is very, very big. So it's kind of a very multicultural uh, uh, people uh, here with us. So it's very interesting even for us Algerians. So uh, you, are, you are making this uh, happening with us. So I'm very, very happy to have you. Um, uh, just a little point. I saw that the, the girl female story of entrepreneurship are very important. So I think we, we need to organize another uh, another special talk about this. Uh, and Amira, uh, I'm kind of a big brother of Amira in entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. she know me how I, I, I think about this story. Huh? For me, there is no woman or man story, just, just a mind, a mindset and a, a, a force de travail, See, this is it. So after that, it's true that in life, sometimes like in country like Algeria, it's harder for women than men. It's true. So we have to, uh, to uh, how to say, to uh, to acknowledge that. But uh, I'm always afraid about the the comment on appelle ça. Comme ils ont appelé ça en France dans la télé, c'était uh, la la ségrégation positive, uh, a positive segregation. You know, 
Yeah. I, I'm always afraid about this because uh, I know that when you start to do this, you are creating another effect which can be worse than the, the first effect. Yeah, and but uh, let's stop. <laughs> we have women, we have men. For me, there is no difference in entrepreneurship. Even if in life there is a difference, it's true. It can be harder for women than men. But uh, if we are men, I, I, and I will finish like this. Remember, we are 8 billion people now on earth. There is a half of these 8 billion people are women. And the other half came from the first half. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good moitié, image. That's a very good image. On his account. So the one That's who true. is speaking now he, uh, is Mr. Mouloud Bakli. He's a famous uh, Algerian working in energy and uh, energy transition. And we, ha we are glad to have him also with us. He is actually in Algeria, but usually he used to be in uh, Dubai. Um, uh, so it's good. Maybe now you you can uh, exchange the, the 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 network between us. Huh? This is the Algerian sure. network. So and even Mouloud is a doctor, but he's also a player of guitar. He likes blues. <laughs> this is it. Huh? This is and really. I'm a, I'm just uh, for the little story. I'm a little bit of an Algerian American guy. With I studied in the U.S. in New York, and then I worked about 13 years in California in the heart of the Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. Then I came back to UK, then France, then now in Dubai. Oh, okay, so you're based in... Um... In UAE. In UAE, okay. Yeah. Actually, my, my taxes moved to UAE and my heart is in Algeria. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly. So, All right. well, nice I think... You. Thanks, Mulut. Thanks a lot to have you with us also. Uh, sure. Yamina, uh, we believe a lot in Yamina. Uh, the project of I, I, I pushed Yamina yes. to. Yes, we to, do. Uh, yeah, yeah. We 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 believe all uh, in the incubator on the uh, in the uh, Yamina project and move. So I, I pushed Yamina to to pitch very fast because you are a business angel and. Uh, <laughs> And I always think that when you have a business angel, don't miss the, 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 the thing. So try to pitch, always. And also, so, I want to mention that Yamina, she's really creative, really creative in her strategy, marketing strategy. And has, she has a lot of uh, amazing videos. Um, we wanted to share it with you so you can see the process. And she filmed it with really cool, um, cool mu music and editing. Uh, it, was, it was great. Maybe I can I can share when you are talking. So uh, continue, Kelly. Uh, okay, right. So uh, as uh, Sophie was saying, also we have a high school student with us. It's the first time we uh, we, we we are doing a, a challenge, including high schools, and we are we have three teams, I think, and we are really impressed. So they are really good, and uh, I think they have all the chance to. Uh, uh, to meet the challenge and maybe to be the, in the final. Uh, again, thanks a lot, uh, Andra. Uh, you are seeing the video of uh, Yamina, uh, which is a TikTok user, uh, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, Shabiba, will I ask you a question? Andra. ما بالش في الحشم توت هدرو بس كم بينا في بس جوش بس شوف بلي أدرى صح نعرف نهدرو بالعربية يا أخي هاكا donc si y a pas de question donc I was just saying that I'm speaking je suis en train de parler en arabe pour permettre à Audra de voir qu'on sait vraiment parler en arabe no actually I had a very little question to Audra but very very briefly I I I put it in the chat but I don't think you saw it uh, actually, it did happen to me a couple of weeks ago where uh, someone in one of the phase of the investment, they came saying uh, they would pay with Bitcoins, uh, with uh, Bit Bitcoin money. Uh, did you have any of this kind of uh, cases in the past or how do we, how do we, how do we treat that? Is this yeah. something com becoming common and more and more or not? Well, I think it's like for the moment, um, the networks I'm involved with, um aren't uh, actually it, it's interesting because in the middle east you know in dubai bahrain and and all the the they're actually developing more in, in crowdfunding platforms and and things with the bitcoin um 
in uh, like in France, you know, they're very kind of slow on how, you know, um, to introduce that in networks. Um, so for, for the moment, you know, it's like how to structure that with, um, you know, um, to use as investments, you know, with the traditional way of investing. Uh, it like it's now under discussion about how it can be done and how like to introduce that to investment networks. Um, it's it's like the beginning of um, the process, I'll say. Okay. There, right. there, there, One other thing that I've seen is the. Would it, the would it, yes, sir. Just, Sorry. Just the thing. Uh, there is what we call the ICO, the initial coin offering. So. It's a kind of uh, levée de fond uh, used by the startup in USA since uh, I think now four or five years. Uh, mm -hmm. So they can uh, raise money. And that is why, I mean, yeah, exactly. So that is why I'm asking the question because in one of the uh, startups I'm involved in, uh, uh, a guy actually from UK, he came with this idea that he, he wants to put, I don't remember, there may be 300K, 300K euro or pounds, sorry, in, in, in Bitcoin's uh, money. But we were like surprised. But uh, anyway, so just just a, just by curiosity. Yeah, it's right. it's um it's the you know it's like the beginning of of seeing you know like networks and investors are in uh, that are interested to see how they can use that as a source of investment. But um, but because you know of the way the angel networks are established and and the traditional way of investing, they're trying to see how can you like how can that be incorporated within these networks and done you know um in parallel or not it, it's like under discussion now so it's basically actually they're introducing more investors to what bitcoin's about about how it could be a, a good source of investment and all so it's more on the educating side you know before actually um the the doing side yet i think the, the main question is it's not under the radar screen of the taxes of authorities that's the main issue right now Anyway, thanks, uh, Doctor uh, Baki. <laughs> always funny, which which uh, is good. Always, uh, yeah, always <laughs> when when I used to call someone Doctor, I I, I feel myself. Uh, in I, know, I know, I know, I know. I don't, I don't, ta I don't take it necessarily as a as um. Oh, from from, from anyway. Doctor to another, so it's okay. <laughs> So, uh, and Yamina is a doctor also, Sofiane also. Uh, we have many doctors, so we can be proud. Oh, hey, come on. Hey, we have, uh, actually, I think we have more doctors than sick people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good uh, thing to know. <laughs> so, again, thank you a lot, Audra. So, yes, we are really happy much. to have you with us. And uh, I will have to um, uh, the, to have you uh, in the final. Maybe you can come and make a cuckoo online. So we will share with you the the link. Uh, mm -hmm. It will be the next uh, uh, Saturday. So okay. Saturday 27th. We will be in the south. So mm -hmm. we will be in the desert. And the final will be there. And we will uh, hold there uh, the eight teams. Uh, uh, we will that we will uh, tomorrow. Uh, select uh, with the, the nice jury. So, thank you. Et uh, Sofiane, maybe, uh, tu veux ajouter quelque chose? Sinon, on laisse le dernier mot à Audra. Uh, non, je, moi, je voulais juste la remercier. Thanks again, because it was really, really easy to reach out with you and uh, to, to accept our invitation. Um, thanks again, and thanks for sharing. We were planned to have one hour talk, and we are almost oh, done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so again, thanks for your generosity. Generosity. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. With pleasure. And thank you. I wish you guys all luck. Um, you know, uh, Sofiane uh, can. You know, um, if some of you want to work on that elevator pitch formula and send it to me uh, for me to give you like uh, a few remarks, you know, before your challenge, feel free to do that. Uh, Thanks a lot. You need to take a look at it. Thanks a lot. And we will share the live uh, on YouTube so you will have uh, these uh, nice faces to share with your friend that there is nice people in Nigeria. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay. So see you. Bye-bye. Okay, have a good weekend. Thanks.